Sindri Sorhas? Is yeah. he popular? Yeah. Well, he must be. He's got, he like, the bajillion views. He's, he's very active on GitHub. Oh, nice. We should, we should get him as a guest. Yeah, let's email him right now. Sindri, come to our house. Maybe we should send him a mail. Like a... A mail? A ma- <laughs> not like a mail person. I mean, like... In the mail? Send him a... A letter? A letter. There you go. Send him an invite. Oh, letter. Do letters. That's old-fashioned. Yeah. It's also... Classy. Go ahead, introduce us, dude. Okay. Um, this is the web of tomorrow. I'm Adam Harris. This and is I'm co-host. Riley Karras <laughs> And uh, today we're going to talk about packaging tools, task automation tools, and scaffolding, and scaffolding. tools. And scaffolding tools. Yeah. Scaffolding tools. Specifically, awesome. mostly we're talking about Grunt, Yeoman, and Bauer. And NPM. If we talked about them in order, it'd probably be NPM, Grunt, Bauer, and Yo, or Yeoman. Because technically, like, technically, it's like Yo. Yeah. <laughs> when you do it in the uh, command line. Not to be confused with the mobile app called Yo. Is there a mobile app called Yo? Yeah, it was sort of popular for a while, and the only thing it did is it sent a push notification to people that said Yo. That's it. Yeah. It was like uh, textless communication, like zero zero characters, basically, because all you can send is the one thing. So it's like an image. It's like poking them. <laughs> Which I never understood. I never got the whole poke thing. No. But I remember back in the day, and this is obviously way off topic, but back in the day... Uh, my buddies and I, we liked this thing, which now they kind of just have it in, in phones anyways, but where you could record what you're saying and send it to everyone, all your friends, and mm-hmm. then you guys could like have like dialogue with each other and like just talk to each other, but you didn't necessarily be having, you didn't have to call each other or anything like that. Gotcha. Yeah, it was fun. It lasted about two days. Yeah. <laughs> That's about how long yo lasted for me. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with uh, NPM. NPM is a pretty cool tool. It's, uh, let's look at their website. What do they call themselves? They call themselves... The um, Package Manager for JavaScript. The Package Manager manager for JavaScript. I've been noticing a, a trend here. They all have a little statement about themselves. Yeah, they say exactly what they are on their homepage. <laughs> yeah. In one sentence. Well, and they've got some cool stats here. Total packages, 195,000, 34,714,000 downloads in the last day? <laughs> what? That's insane. Yeah, well, I mean, every time you run npm install, it's going to run through and just download everything. That's uh, true. For that, for that thing you're working on. Yeah, that's true. So what is a package manager for JavaScript? What the heck does that even mean? Because now we're getting into some like kind of even more difficult things just because at this point you may have not even played with the command line. You may not have even played with uh, programming even just a little bit. But if you have, uh, you probably haven't quite seen... Uh, the needs that so many other more senior developers have seen, this need for automation, this need for, um, you know, taking uh, shortcuts to things so that they don't have to do everything. Yeah. Um, So what is NPM? So it's a package manager. And a package manager is basically a program that runs, that keeps track of the things that you need to install, the packages that you need to install and what version you need. And maybe those packages also require their own packages. And those packages require their own packages. So so here's the fun funny thing. Um we talked about uh another package manager technically, which is uh Bauer, right? Right. Um but that's also a package. (laughs) So uh NPM could download Bauer, which is a package but Bauer has a little bit of a different use case as far as what packages it deals with. 
NPM, it seems like it deals with... Um, Mostly NPM is used for development type yeah. uh, tasks uh, or packages. So if there's a package that um, runs your unit test or um, minifies your code, typically you'll install that with NPM. Although okay. you can install front-end libraries like Angular and jQuery with NPM. But typically you do those with Bower. That's what well. That's what I've seen most commonly done. Yeah, me too. And that's what I mostly use Bower for is to download my Angular, for example, really quickly into my projects. Um, which, in a little bit here, we're going to talk about a scaffolding tool called Yeoman, and that one kind of does that as well. So there's some overlap, just as as usual. You know, as we're talking about this. You're going to see a lot of overlap, and it can it can seem confusing. So, go visit the websites, and you'll understand the differences. Yeah. And they're both really cool. I mean, and there's definitely more than one. Like, there's also um, I think so. Grunt is one that we talk about, but uh, back in the day, people were using Gulp a lot more than Grunt, and now I feel like yeah. people use Grunt a little bit more. Um, so there's a lot of overlap about the the packages. It's kind of more according to what you prefer. Uh, and to be clear, like you don't have to use any of these tools to do front-end development. Yeah, you could do it all yourself. You can just do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can download the libraries you need manually. There's nothing wrong with that. You can go to jQuery.com or whatever it is and just download it. In fact, uh, sometimes it can get a little confusing just because they provide a certain type of structure to your project and you may not be used to that structure. Uh, so you may want to get a, a little bit comfortable with your ability to program first. I don't know. I would honestly just jump into these things immediately because they make your life a lot easier. Uh, like, so the reason I say that is, um, I guess I'll just really, I, I'm not, I guess I'm not really following any order here by saying this, but Yeoman uh, is a scaffolding tool. And what that means is that uh, Yeoman has several generators and its, its purpose is to help you build web apps. And so one example is an Angular generator. And so I go into my command line. I've now used npm to install uh, Yaelman. Uh, Yaelman is now being used to install a project, an actual full project with everything that I need into it. But it also builds a structure that I will follow. So it might not necessarily be a structure that I'm used to. And that what I mean by structure is the structure of my HTML, structure of my CSS, structure of my Angular, um, of my services and controllers. And, and all the, full, the directories and files are already... Yeah, everything that's involved kind of a, in my project. That's just kind of a starter project. So it's like a scaffold. So you can actually start building actual structure of yeah. the app. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool g generators out there for Yeoman for basically any type of project you want to make. It's, prob they pro it's probably already generated for it. But um, actually, at my work, we've made our own generators for yeah. our, our types of projects. Yeah, the process, actually, of making your own generator isn't crazy complicated either. Um, but then again, if you're, like, super new and you're just joining us with this you probably are super lost. So I would go back to the first <laughs> webisode and uh, and follow the order because we're trying to dive into complicated, uh, go start off easy and start going more complicated, and uh, and then obviously focus a little bit more on JavaScript in a little bit here. So I've talked for a million years now. <laughs> Adam, what is a grunt and what is a task management tool? Yeah, so as your project gets more complicated, there's... Ed... <laughs> <laughs> My squeaky chair. Okay, let's pause. Let's rewind it. Yeah, so Grunt is a tool that helps you do common things to your files that you're working on. And so... Uh, I think one of the most useful things you can do with Grunt is you can have it watch your files for changes and then run a set of tasks. Those tasks might be refresh your browser, which is super useful. So you don't have to switch to your browser and hit refresh. Just as soon as you change your file, 
Grunt sees that and it refreshes your browser for you. But it can also do other things like uh, check your code for any possible errors. That's called linting. Um, or it can do unit testing if you do that. Um, it can minify your files or it can like convert from SAS to CSS. So what is minifying your files? Some, some people may have not have heard of that yet. Yeah, minifying just makes the, the file smaller. It's kind of like compressing an image, but for code. And so it'll take out all the insignificant white space and it will convert your long variable names to one letters and stuff like that. Yeah, which is super cool because, uh, yeah, it makes everything a lot faster. And again, uh, as you guys probably know, uh, you want your web pages to load faster. Yeah, it... To, it won't uh, it won't make your pages load faster when you're just working on it yourself, right? Yeah. Like variable name length doesn't matter. But when someone's using your your website, it will download that file faster. Right. And so so yeah, the exactly. initial load of the web page is going to be faster. Perfect. And Wonderful. also it can combine a bunch of JavaScript files into one JavaScript file. or um, And that's called concatenating. And you can do that same thing with CSS. So, you, so that when you're working with your JavaScript, it can be in multiple files. And then when it's served to the client, it's just one file. This is when we need that British female voice to come up and be like, concatenate to blah, 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 you know? <laughs> That's a good word, yeah. concatenate. I actually haven't really heard it used. I'm trying to remember where I usually hear it used. Usually you hear it with variables that are strings and you combine two strings yeah that's what it is okay my, my mind like had the like just most ultimate brain fart in the world when you said concatenate i was like what i've heard that before but i feel like i've heard it for in a different a way different way but you're right that's exactly what i was <laughs> what it is for um and i, I love the uh, the minification package that's most popular it's called uglify and then you know how i talked about chrome dev tools recently yeah if you are inspecting a minified file, Chrome DevTools has a Prettify button. Oh, yeah, so that you can actually see it again. Yeah, it kind of adds in the white space, but it can't, like, it can't yeah, give it you can't the variable name back. Interesting thing, this is an interesting aside, since this isn't that necessarily directly relate to what we're talking about right now, but minifying is also a way that, that people will keep their JavaScript secure. Uh, because yeah, it, sort of, yeah, sort of, I mean, not completely, but I don't know if you, if you guys have already dabbled around with Chrome developer tools and looked at, uh, other people's JavaScript, you probably have noticed that it's like one big, just like blob of everything just together. And you're like all on one really long line. It's like, it's like basically learning Spanish in high school for two years and then going down to Mexico and you're like, this is not the same language that I learned. Yeah. <laughs> you look at it and you're like, what the heck? This is nothing like what I learned. It really confused me at first until I realized that they had minified their files. Um, and it's not necessarily why they do it. I mean, as far as security, um, but it does secure their file a little bit. It secures their process of like what variables they use yeah. and, and things like that. So you Yeah, it's can, not very readable. It's not readable at all. Uh, I mean, you'll look at it and there'll be like A's, A, A, A. And you're like, okay, what the heck was that A Yeah, what's variable? that A variable for? <laughs> and that's like obviously not the name of the variable. But that's what a uh, minifier does. And that's what uh, Grunt will help you do with your, with your files. And then what I have used it for is actually with Yeoman. Uh, Yeoman will just automatically throw Grunt into your project and then uh, automatically throw in that browser refresh ability so that when you make changes. So it's really cool for CSS uh, if you're doing some aesthetic changes, uh, you'll see it automatically in the browser, which, or actually, I guess technically even better is when you're doing some um, back endy things, I guess, like trying to communicate with an API and you're trying to pull that information, you want to see that information actually getting pulled. Yeah. Um, and if you're like trying to fix a bug that's supposed to be fixing that specific thing, and all of a sudden, you, you know, as you're making these changes, you see, oh, hey, it pulled it. Uh, that's also a really good reason Yeah. Um, for, for having that refresh ability. So, man, that's... We actually got through that... A lot faster than I thought we were going to. There's a lot more we could say. Oh, we there's a lot like, more we could say. Yeah. Just barely touch the tip of the iceberg, but 
I mean, uh, have, and have we talked about, uh, like, other efficiency tools that allow you to do things efficient, efficiently, like Bootstrap? Did we ever actually talk about Bootstrap? No, no we didn't? Man, Bootstrap is really cool. Uh, I feel like it's not as used as much, just because it does lend itself to a little bit of... Uh, a cookie cutter? Cookie cutterness. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly... Um, but it's great for when you're just starting. It helps you do some of those really annoying things. I like using it for like search bars or and yeah, things I like, like it. that. Is there anything else? No, that's about it. I don't, I don't know how to wrap it up. You know how to wrap it up? No. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us in this journey of packaging management tools, task management tools, scaffolding tools. Basically, we're just full All of the tools. tools. Like, so many tools. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to channel my inner Napoleon Dynamite. Have you seen it? Yeah. Cool. I liked it. All right. See you next week, Nick, or see you Thursday. Yeah. We're, we're killing it. <laughs> <laughs>